Hello, 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 hello. Happy Monday. Oh my God, I've been out here running. My nose is running. Uh, happy Monday. It's Monday and Monday sucks. And we are here to drink, talk to you about whiskey, and hopefully learn you some stuff. Anyway, I'm Jack Bigadu. I'm the Hood Summer D. For all of you guys don't know, do me a favor. As usual, I ask is every week, make sure, just make sure you click like, right? The like button. Make sure you share with your whiskey groups. That's what we do right now. Every time anybody's watching is sharing your whiskey group so more people know what happened on Monday. Because t- today, this show is going to be quite special. We have some guests. We have a lot of things that will be announced, said. And it's also a special day of somebody very special. But this show doesn't happen without the man, the myth, the legend, the one to punch TVR. The man that make Louisville sound like Louisville, the California giant <laughs> in the house. What's happening? Oh man, you are too kind. <laughs> happy, you are happy too kind. Oh, happy birthday. Birthday. oh, buddy, buddy, thank you, thank you. Today's special is your birthday. It is your birthday. Today's a du- today's a double special day. We will, yeah. well, maybe a triple special day, a quadruple special day. Whatever, man. It's it's uh, the beginning of something. The end of okay. something. Okay. We're gonna get into it. We're gonna get I gotta tease just a little bit. We'll get into it. We'll get into it. Absolutely. How are you? Absolutely. I'm I'm doing well. I'm doing well. How how are you? I know I know I know before the show started, you said something about broken glass. I hope everything's okay. Yeah, yeah. I I, I broke I broke my glasses. Yeah, I, I broke a few, <sighs> you know, a couple glasses. This week I've done a lot of stuff. So this week what I did is I I, I was a presenter on in the Belfast mm, Whiskey Fest. That's right. How did that go? that went really well i talked we talked a lot about whiskey we talked a lot about i talked to a few brands uh that i was quite impressed by uh about all the brands that i got to talk to uh irish whiskey is something is definitely something worth exploring because there's so much good irish whiskey out sure, there that sure. people don't even know about so the the highlight of this whole thing was that i got to talk to the to uh the master distiller slash owner of mm. sexton have you have you ever oh, seen oh yeah dude absolutely did you know that a woman a woman owned that place? i sure did and the funny thing is i've always seen sexton never even picked it up but sure. when she told me all the thing that went to this thing i'm like i feel, i literally looked at her i say i feel like a idiot. You're like, I've been doing myself a huge disservice <laughs> a, a, a huge disservice because i'm i'm not I am not out here telling you all the things that you need mm. to know about um, about you know about the brands out there because truly being someone that we love talking about whiskey we like teaching people about whiskey I'm like how is it that I never even paid attention to this weird black bottle and I say you know what? it's your fault because you remind me of death all the time it's and such truly, a cool looking bottle about. though it's yeah. such a cool looking bottle Why that's what it's about it, it was truly about uh, knowing. Uh, where the journey you take and know sure. where you come from and knowing where you're going in life, right? And and it was just something incredible, 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 incredible. If you're here, it's Monday. Thanks for joining us. I'm here with my man TVR. But today's not about us right now. Because no. remember, today's show is going to be quite short because the real party is going to happen on Instagram. We can, After we are done with our guests here, we're not going to drag it too long. We go on Instagram there. I need TVR and everybody, uh, his friends, to come on, and we're going to celebrate. We're going to drink some wild turkey because that's the only thing he knows how to drink. <laughs> and I'm going to open, just like he actually bamboozled me on my on my birthday, I'm opening some old Carter as well, and we actually going to toast to his birthday. We get to celebrate with him. But for now, today is about good time. Good time. Good time. Good time. You can say good time any way you want, and it will always sound great. Agreed. You could be, you you could be literally off tune, off key, off tone, and say good time, and people go, yeah, <laughs> good time. Like you can be everything. Good times literally is is a symphony on its own. Mm. For all of you guys who don't know about what close to about a year now, there's this weird brand that came out of nowhere, calling themselves Good Time. Like where's the Jeffersons at? Where are the Jeffersons? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, uh, a friend of mine that I actually did a lot of bottle trading and uh, bought some bottle from actually told me, it's like, 
uh, hey, you want to you want to try this good time. I've tried it. I like it. And I'm going to make sure that the people from good time can get reach out to you. It wasn't even like two minutes after that. And I'm like, who are these good time people? Who are they? So I say, you know what? I got a chance to chat with them. They send me a couple bottles. I say, you know what? Instead of us just having a conversation so I know who you are, come on Monday sucks because here we ask all the hard questions. It's and we true. want the world to know what you do, who you are, where you are, so they can actually be more educated. And they can That's actually right. tell you, they can actually pick up your bottle knowing exactly who you are. Knowing the men behind the brand or the women behind the brand helps you obviously know more and do better and make better choices. So without any further, any further delay, we're going to bring the man behind the bottle <laughs> the we got we the man's without, without <laughs> we are going to bring the the one the first the guy that kept in touch with me the whole time the man that i have his cell phone now and he's in trouble because every time i have to bitch about something I'm he's gonna hear from it <laughs> Jimmy. Yo! what's up Jimmy? we are here we are here now let's talk about the man behind the screen that always only send me emails. You know, he he's not out here in the streets. He's just in the email world. But he's also part of good time because you can't have a good time by yourself. You, you need to at least to have a good time. We bring in Nick. How you doing, brother? What up? Uh, welcome, 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 welcome to Monday yeah. Sucks. Today we are here. Let, let's see what people are saying. How many people here know about good time? Who knows about good time? Put in the comment, put an F in the comment or in the chat if you know about good time. Because I feel like I was the only crazy person that did not know about good time until somebody told me about it. So who here knows good time? Um, uh, I'll, I'm very I'll be good. honest. I, have, I know about it, but I haven't drank any good times. And, and you know what? Today is going to be really the true late man test because I, I've had the good time bottle for almost two months now. And I never actually opened it. Two because months, like, huh, Jimmy? Huh, Nick? <laughs> two months? Two You're months. You know days. when I got my bottles? You know when I got my bottles? Yesterday. Yesterday. I know. Because yeah. I told Jimmy, I said, Jimmy, do us a favor. Make sure Tim that never answers his messages. Make sure that you go and deliver these bottles to him. Call him so he can actually he get this bottle. But I, you know, Tim, you have to admit, I'm kind of special. I'm a special kid. You are. I'm so, not even gonna disagree with that's that. That's that's why that's why everybody like me to actually try their shit because I'm a special kid. I mean, I'm talking short bus special, so you know yeah. <laughs> they do have to give me a little bit of there we all are. uh so I would say Jimmy Nick, welcome to Monday Sucks. Uh thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for your evening. I think Nick is the one who's stuck at home with the kids right now. So if if we hear anything or kids running around, don't worry. This is Monday sucks. No one will judge you. We are, no we are, here, we are here for all of it. No problem at all. Uh, I will let you introduce yourself. Uh, your pick. Who start? What up? I'm Jimmy Underfoot. I love bourbon. Mondays don't always suck, do they? We need to make sure, Jimmy, yo, you need to make sure you kill all your apps. Uh, your internet, uh, your internet, internet may need some internet. So make sure you kill all your apps. <laughs> 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 so, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy, tell us a little bit about you. Man, I'm old. I'm just an old, poor Kentucky boy. You know, I'm born and raised here in Bullock County, Kentucky. Just uh, love bourbon. Um I've been collecting bourbon since I'm 21. I'm 41, so 20 years. Uh, I remember going on the bourbon tour when I, back when 20 years ago, and they're like, the bourbon boom's coming, the bourbon boom's coming, and here it is, you know? Absolutely. I love bourbon. I've been collecting bourbon, drinking the best bourbon I get my hands on. Uh, Tim there see me around town. I go to all the campouts and the lotteries and the raffles and distillery releases. I just love good bourbon. Living in Kentucky, oh, oh. All of them. So you're the guy who goes around everywhere to get bottles. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, Nick, tell us about you. 
Uh, yeah, hey, I'm, I'm Nick, you know. Uh, so uh, I've known Jimmy since uh, high school, so also born and raised in Bullitt County. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm the guy behind the scenes, like you mentioned earlier. Um, Jimmy got me into uh, chasing bourbon. I mean, I've been, I've been drinking bourbon since I was a teenager myself, but uh, Jimmy got me into the craft side and going to the releases and the whole bourbon life, if you will, a couple, I don't know, three, four years ago. And uh, uh, just been living the dream ever since. But uh, so, same thing, bourbon loving for years and – here we are. So two two friends, obviously, that have known each other forever, decide to actually get into bourbon. Why? I've always wanted to start a business. Um, so I worked for corporate America for probably almost 14 years. I've got a master's degree in engineering. It's fire quality work for G and Bosch. Um, you know, after uh, 12 or 13 years that I just realized it really wasn't for me. And uh, so I quit that job from Bosch probably about four years ago when I started getting into bourbon. Um, and my, my intent was to come back and open a coffee shop, to be honest. Uh, I really loved coffee at the time. I was going to come home and start my own coffee business. And for one reason or another, it didn't work out. And uh, I think I'm glad for that. So, so yeah. how, how did Good Time come about? How did the name come about? Uh, we were sitting around drinking, chilling, have a good time. Uh, <laughs> we were so I about- say, how did good time come about without you using the word good time? <laughs> <laughs> we were sitting around, uh, sky high one night and we were just like, where are we going to call our brand? And we just looked at each other and it goes back to high school, you know, like uh, hanging out and getting crazy and wild. And, uh, and we just always say, good times, good times. This is good times. And we were sitting around one night, and we were just like, cheers into good times. And we were like, oh, that's our bourbon name. And it just happened, man. Yeah. It, it was not the first name of the business. We had okay. we had another name for the brand, tell, actually. Tell, we tell me just, a little bit on the name you, you, you came about before you, you settled on good times. Yeah, where where were we on names? That's that's that, that was my question. I want to know what did, what did we land well, on before we got to good times? Did we add a Jimmy and friends? We had a <laughs> Jimmy, did we, did uh, we, we had, we had, had quite a list actually. We did have a list of quite a few things. Coming up with um, uh, and what you think, you know, like I mean, you got to come up with a good catchy name. Uh, I was born in 1980 and. Uh, Kentucky Derby winner was uh, Genuine Risk in 1980, so we were going to go with Gen- Genuine Risk. Okay. And then uh, we were sitting around one night and just came up with Good Times. So that really was, yeah. We cheers to Good Times, and uh, and Jimmy said, "Wait, that's it." Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good because I've always wondered uh, how you know how is it that that came about, but I can I can I can I can see it now. Uh, that's kind of how we came up with Monday sucks too, because we always meet on Monday and it's always after we had a long day and we're like, you know, our Monday does suck. We, 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 we are here just to, to, you know, to decompress. So really that's how it all started. Uh, now what is good time? Because the only time obviously that I've seen good time is because there is a bourbon group that is picking a barrel. So I never understood. I really thought it was just uh, a bourbon group label that they made for themselves, referring to, you know, the show Good Times. So that's why I never even thought you could buy it. So in my head, I'm like, you know, everybody come with their crazy labels. And obviously the type of bottle you guys use, there's a bourbon brand that also use that. So it's like, oh, you know what? These people probably came up with their own label. So they so tell 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 us a little bit how. What is good time? How, how, what, what type of bourbon am I looking at? Are, are you craft? Are you what are you? We want to know. Uh, so we, um, yeah, yeah bought four barrels of MGP last year, about a little over a year ago. And we're like, hey man, we'll do something with these barrels and we'll figure it out. You know, it's like a dream and a wish and a prayer. And and a little over a year later, here we are. So we just uh sourced from MGP. I'm a huge MGP fan, like I've got all kind. I've got over 100 OKI, 10 and 12 year olds, like all all the reserves and uh, single barrels and uh, Boone counties and blocks. Just in case you're wondering, uh, 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 Tim, if we're looking for OKI, we know a guy. <laughs> we know I was about guy. I was about to drop I was about to drop what OKI actually is because I feel like there's plenty of people that watch our show that don't know. There's there's plenty of new uh, plenty of new. Right. Plenty of new people into into brands that don't know what OKI is. OKI, yeah. 
tell yeah so, tell, tell the people okay what so it, okay yeah, i is the is the precursor to new riff it's New Riff sourced 300 barrels from MGP, and they, they sourced eight-year-old distillate. Uh, and over four years, while their distillate was maturing, they were going to release these OKI b- barrels. Um, Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, that's what the OKI stands for. Mm-hmm. And uh, it just it took off. It hit like the nine- or ten-year mark, and everyone started losing their mind for these things. And it was some great whiskey. It's kind of, I think it's kind of, it's one of the things that, that really, really made MGP popular, I would say. I mean, MGP was already like, you know, kind of barely soaring under the radar, but OKI okay, really, really put them there. I uh, picked an OKI okay up, liquor barn up the street for like sixty nine ninety nine one day, come, came home and popped it. And I, holy cow, what is this? Right. I never, I never had OKI, okay, by the way. I don't, oh my I don't gosh. So know, then I, I don't even know what that like, is. A year straight, I'll hit every liquor store within 100 miles from Louisville and just accumulate as many oak. <laughs> and He's that, like, I know what's coming on. I feel like a god. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I got all the old good MGP. And y'all come, anytime anybody's in Louisville, Kentucky, hit me up and come drink some of the best uh, old yeah. MGP you can get. I got smoke. You know, I could have sworn that somebody oh. who runs this show lives in Louisville. I know. I yeah. know. I know. Who because lives in Louisville on this show? Someone, oh, someone, there's someone on this show that lives on Louisville. <laughs> Come on over, man. <laughs> oh, I'm probably should finish the show. That's what I did deliver from Big Jimmy's house. Now I know why Nick likes me so much, you know? I got all the good bourbon. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> so so you guys source your bourbon from MGP? Yes, sir. More proud. What? Is it 100 percent MGP? Every- Everything to this day is MGP. Uh, now, we do have some Kentucky bourbon uh, on the way in. Um, but Can you that, tell us the mash bill? Uh, on which one? On the, the Kentucky the, bourbon that's coming in. Oh, the Kentucky bourbon. Oh. Um, he can't tell us the mash bill. God damn it. <laughs> you know, I just don't like Jimmy bringing this stuff up a whole lot till, till, till we uh, get it Terry, ready to mark. He's through. like me. He's like, he's like <laughs> don't, don't give me any. No, no, no pre, no pre, pre announcement. Let's take it out so people actually know when it's out. I mean, so we I gotta got, ask. I gotta got, ask the question. Go yeah. ahead. No, no, go ahead. I don't want to interrupt you. You still got coming on. Uh, we've just got good, unique, creative, gonna blow your mind things on the way. So just okay. Uh, you see now you're learning, Jimmy. <laughs> Nick is like perfect. that's why. I perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Perfectly put. <laughs> There's great, unique, fun things happening. Okay, so why while the hold finishes. on, hold 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 on. Shannon made a comment. Someone made a comment. Shannon made a comment. Check so to meet because oh Jim, no, Jimmy's face looked familiar, but I wasn't sure where I've seen you before. And then I realized now that Shannon made the comment that the first barrel I've ever picked of New Riff when we were in town. We met you. Really? Oh, see, he doesn't even remember. <laughs> yeah, it was in October. I was the only one black guy in the group, so you could miss me. <laughs> yeah. I, uh... When we when we were picking new riff, we went. Uh, it was me, Will, Shannon. We picked new riff, and when we going around, I'm like, "Your face looks familiar." But I'm like, "I know. I, I've seen. I've seen you before." Did I see you at new riff, or where did I see you at? No, no, no. It was uh, where? Where did we go? We went somewhere. That's when we met you. Shannon, Shannon can remind me. He's a he's the one who actually uh, New Riff picked. Shannon, man, he was down here. Uh, him and Will <laughs> the other day. Yeah, you. you oh, no, Shannon is a good guy. Shannon, Shannon is the first person on the internet that bought my my merchandise. For that, I always respect him. That's awesome. He, Shannon is the first person when I when I release Hood Summer D, it was the first person that I say I'm gonna buy a shirt. So, so they were one of the first customers yeah, to wear in the list of our first customers. Sh- Shannon, Shannon, Shannon is a uh, Shannon is uh, is is good people, and he wore my shirt too when I came to do the pick with them. I'm like, oh Shannon, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, you guys go to MGP. Uh, how does one decide I'm going to take all my money knowing how barrels are expensive? I'm going to take my money and just put it into this risk. I mean, Seriously. 
I know I know how much an average barrel costs, right? So if somebody go buy four barrels on the minimum, I know what you have spent. Now we're talking bottling, we're talking labeling, we're talking all this thing, right? So Nick, unless you won the lottery somewhere and you didn't tell nobody, or you convinced Jimmy to actually cash up his 401k, how does well, one- Well, I cashed out my that? 401k, that's for sure. <laughs> Nick is like, I ain't got no 401k. <laughs> I had one. <laughs> But really, uh, so when I quit my job for corporate America you know, three or four years ago is when I cashed out for one k out, and I was down to the end of it. I really was. I, uh, you know, like I said, I tried to. Uh, I wanted to do a coffee shop, and uh, I was trying all kinds of little business adventures. I was running my own handyman company. You know, it's one man show, but I was doing okay. Uh, but it really got to where flipping bourbon was uh, making me just as much money on a daily basis as running a handyman company. Did you say flipping bourbon? Yeah, flipping bourbon. Tell, tell, tell me more about that, because I, mean, I, was, I, because I got down to where I. Had, the reason why I want to know I want to know about that is because mo, there is there is a lot of emotions when it comes to the bourbon business. Right? Uh, you have people that actually I I, have, I I know people that actually do flip bourbon. I, I have people that actually will drink bourbon, and I have people that actually will collect it like me behind them and is collecting dust. And the, you know, it's always fuck the secondary market and the flippers are the devil. So tell me about that because obviously you don't have horns on. So you are just a regular average guy starting a bourbon business. So tell me, tell me about that because if nothing else, I wanna, I wanna be able to bring this subject up uh, without it being a conflictive thing, right? Because every time we talk about flipping bourbon or, you know, as people are selling bourbon, like, oh my God, that's the devil right there. That is the devil. And you go, okay, he's just a regular, regular person. I want to hear from him. Why not? Because obviously my friend Will, without Will, I wouldn't have had some bottles that I want. And that's because Will will, will get me those bottles. But they weren't secondary prices, but they were also quite high because he had he needed his profit so i'm with them you know i'm with him on that because he helped me find things that i know i will never get a chance to get and i know he wake up social at four o'clock in the morning standing in line waiting for a bottle so i have to respect that so jim uh, jimmy or nick nick is yeah. the one who mentioned flipping tell us how you know well how you I, end up there I was about to say something earlier when Jimmy was talking about he, he tried OKI for the first time and once he tasted it, he went to every store to buy it. I mean, if you're into bourbon, you know, if you find a bottle you like, if you don't get it now, it's not going to be there tomorrow. It's not going to be there next week. You know? mm -hmm. So I quit my job working for Bosch. I, I, you know, I worked for Bosch. I was making six figures. I quit that job and I moved back to Kentucky and I was just going to uh, follow my dreams. I just wanted to do stuff. When I woke up every day, I was going to do something that made me happy, do something I love. I, and, and the coffee shop didn't work out for me, unfortunately. And I was doing this handyman job working, you know. Um, and uh, but I was also following my dream. So I was into craft beer. When I when I lived in North Carolina, I got into craft beer, um, came back to Kentucky. I, I mean, I made a trip to Oklahoma one time just to buy a bunch of beer, you know. Uh, and I was just doing things that I loved and um, would do this handyman work to, to just pay the bills. And I was living off my 401k from, from GE. And uh Jimmy was actually like, well, if you're into craft beer, you should check out some bourbon releases with him. And same concept, you know. So then I started buying bourbon everywhere I would go. Uh, it got down to the point where if I didn't have the money to pay my bills off my handyman work, I would just sell a few bottles of things in the month. So I, I started collecting bourbon and craft beer, and I had a huge collection. And really, most of my 401k went into bourbon and beer, you know. Um, but then three years later, when I'm just doing this handyman work, and that's all I have, uh, when it gets down to the end of the month, uh, if you have to sell a bottle of your four roses from last year, that's what you got to do. You know, so I was I was selling bourbon to get out when we started this company, for the most part. Then you realize that was you know, profit. I, there was profit into sell. I wasn't. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, once I had a collection and I saw what people were paying for the stuff that was sitting in my house, it was kind of mind blowing. You know, I was really shocked. But if that's what you got to do to pay your rent, I wasn't hurting anybody. I mean, people were, I, I never sold a bottle to somebody that was ungrateful, that, that didn't say thank you. That was the greatest thing. I've been looking for this. You know? uh, not everybody lives in, 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 in Kentucky. You know, I lived in North Carolina. And when I moved to Bosch and, you know, I was working uh, for Bosch and corporate America, these guys were taking vacations to come to Kentucky just to buy bottles of bourbon. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't realize how cool bourbon was when I lived here, born and raised right in the backyard. Bourbon was in my backyard, you know. 
born and raised, didn't realize how awesome it was. And once I moved back from North Carolina, um, it was it was quite shocking to see what people uh, w- w- would do for the things that was being made right there that I had access to every single day. Yeah, there is a, a so, long ass so bourbon. Yeah. So, so yeah. what you said, really to get the company you started, started, I had to quite a bit of my Jimmy got you into mm-hmm. this whole waking up at five o'clock in the morning to go do this. You spent all your four love into you. this thing. Now you have to sell it all. Yeah, pretty much. But that info, well, not, Jimmy, not today. Jimmy, this is all your fault. But, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I, I am kidding. But Jimmy, no, my buddy Josh, how, how you my got buddy Josh, got me to crap here first. What was that, sir? How did you get into it? How did you get into the bottle, the bottle flipping thing? Uh, so I'm, I'm just gonna shoot you straight, man. Um, I'm. Uh, so I've been, I worked at Red Lobster the last uh, 13 years of my life, and I got four kids, so times have been tough, you know. Mm-hmm. I found out that I can go get bottles, and I can drink some, and I can flip some, and I can trade some, and. It's just like a currency that's in my backyard and I can go uh, spend a little bit of time, you know, and meet a bunch of cool people and drink a bunch of good bourbon and uh, trade a bunch of cool bottles. And uh, it's just been kind of uh, it's 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 kind of like cause I know you all seen that heist, you know, the mm-hmm, Netflix, mm-hmm. it's addicting. It's addictive. It's addictive out there. Uh, hunting bourbon bottles is addictive. And then you you say, and you I'm broke it. right now. It's, it's, <laughs> it's awesome. You know, it's addicting. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I've got a dick, a dick personality, and it's winning. You know, when you go out and it's a it's a high, you know, you find good bottles. Like, oh my gosh, you know, like God, somebody's looking looking after me, you know, and and then uh, it came to the point I uh, got a bunch of bottles. I got a couple thousand bottles, and uh, I wanted to start a bourbon bar, uh, but COVID hit, and uh, my buddy Robert with Down Home Bourbon, shout out to Robert. Uh, he was get you guys in the door here, three boys. Uh, so I sold my presidentials, my King Kentuckys, and my birthday bourbon. Uh, sold that, and we started good times with that money. We bought some MGP barrels. We bought glass. We bought labels. We bought corks, foils. We paid for our labels to get approved to TTP. You know, I mean, it was just kind of a let's do this. It was a risk, you know. I loved yeah, all that's, my. That's what I was about to say. It, it, it is truly a risk to start a new brand because those don't come cheap. Yeah, we got four barrels of MGP, and we're like, well, we'll figure it out. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. <clears throat> and then we were huge fans of the Barstown Bourbon Company. Their, uh, mm-hmm. their apple brandy finish, their Chateau mm-hmm. O, the Oroloso, Oroloso finish. Mm-hmm. Those these are really, 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 really good. And we're like, hey, we might go get some Jim MGP and kind of do this type of deal too. So we got some uh, MGP. We toasted one. We apple brandy finished one, and here we are. A year yeah. later, nuts. We started with four barrels and. You know, we had a couple hundred barrels, you know, it's it's crazy. That's <clears throat> before I ask the next question, Tim, you've been you've been very quiet. I got a lot on my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta I gotta I gotta uh, address the elephant in the room. Yeah. Jimmy already knows what's coming. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's talk, go get let's it. Talk, let's talk about Russell's gate, bro. <laughs> let's talk about <laughs> Russell's gate because you just talked about how it's a high. What happened there, dude? Why <laughs> why did you do why did you do what you did? Uh I mean uh, let's be real. Oh, let's learn, let's be real. Uh, what yeah. it, so you talking yeah. about Russell's getting I, lost. My boy. Okay, so I'll, I'll fill I'll fill let me fill Jack in really quick. So the Nick, you want to hold the bottle up again really quick? <laughs> so this bottle There you go. This bottle, Jimmy okay. went to Kroger. And got some bottles and put this sticker on them and wax dipped them uh-huh. and sold a Kroger single barrel pick as this tater bottle. Okay. And he got caught and he got called out on it. Okay. So I want to give you a chance to tell your side of the story. Tell you, I want to hear what I, I've never, I only heard it one side. I want to know what's going on, why you did what you did. Well, okay. first That's, of all, I, I took so, all the blame and I took it on the chin and I took it like a champ. Okay. But my boy DA, it was 100% his idea. Yeah, DA was there. Who is not DA? I'm not going to mention no name. Okay, okay, okay. DA, and he was like, hey. so first of all, it started with uh, Twix 6. is like the best Russell Reserves I've ever had in my life. It's phenomenal. So 
we're always trying to find a better Russell Reserves than Twix Six, and it's impossible. Uh, so he was like, oh, I found this really good store pick up the street. It's it's amazing. Try it. And I tried. I was like, oh, my goodness, that's really good. What's going on? Where's that at? Can we get some mm-hmm. more of those? And he was like. And uh, we've been doing uh, barrel picks at the time. Yeah, we were doing barrel you picks know? at the time. We'd done Four Roses and Knob Creek and 1792 and Woodford. I mean, all kinds of picks. Like, I, yeah, I, I started the VTA, and we we were trying to get any barrel pick we could, you know. And some of these mm-hmm. stores, you'd go in and you'd, you'd get a barrel pick with them, but they ain't going to let you have the whole barrel. They want some for their store, too. Okay. We just done a Four Roses pick where they only got us let us get like thirty or forty percent of the barrel from John O's, you know. But we 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 got that Four Roses pick. We went on the pick, and it was a, it was a great time, you know. And but the store would only give us, you know, forty percent of the barrel for our group. I'm listening, guys. Sorry, I need to move. I'm listening. So so my boy D A was like, let's go talk to let's go up the street and talk to the store and see what's going on. So we went up there. And they were like, oh, y'all want these bottles? Uh, and like, yeah, we have a bourbon club. And we think our people in our bourbon club would really like these bottles. And they're like, and they're like, well, we, we like to put sticker and wax on them if that's okay. And they're like, once you leave here, buy the bottles. You leave here, you can do whatever you want with them. You and your um, bourbon club can wax them and sticker them and do whatever you want with them, you know? So we got like 20 or 30 bottles. And okay. It was phenomenal, and we took them, and we waxed and stickered them, and we offered them to the group, and a couple of them got out on the secondary, and everybody called me out on it, and I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to hide from from what happened, you know. I mean, it is what it is. You live and you learn, and I got uh-huh. on the burden. Okay, see, so this is a different story than I heard. I'm glad I asked because I was under the impression that Bottle X came out. And you found bottle A, and you made bottle A look like bottle X, but that's not the case. Okay, yep. that's a diff- that's that's different then. So time is good to ask the question. This, this is why I asked. Can you hear? You know, like. Well, this is why this is why we ask the hard questions on this show. Man, Give I you a chance because, to- because because yeah. here here's what I say. There's we we can get a little petty in the sure. in the in the bourbon industry, right? You, you see all type of personality in the bourbon industry, and people can get quite petty. I'm talking serious petty, rumors, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, opinions, and whatnot. But if you never give the opportunity to the person, either Nick or Jimmy, to actually tell their side of the story, how you, what, what, what is the point then, right? What is, what, what is, what is the point? I mean... Uh... I don't understand, man. But you know, I took it like a champ, and you no, know. no, no. I, and and like I said, me, I, I told there was Tim, definitely. I told Tim, I don't. I, I'm not a fan of rumors. I I do not like rumors I'm because awesome. even even about us, I I heard rumors as, as well. Even though we only hold a show, you're gonna hear a bunch of shit. But the truth here is, we need to be clear, and we need to be very clear. Oh yeah. Every story, just like a coin, have two sides. Yes, sir. You want to you want to hear both sides. I now do. you may turn into the Russell Gate guy, or you may just be a guy that saw an opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, you may just be the guy that saw an opportunity and just use that opportunity uh, to your advantage. Uh, there is a guy in the bourbon industry right now that everybody call an asshole because what happened is there was a barrel that came out. And because of the rule of his state, the barrel was supposed to go to a group, but because of the rule of the state, he actually was able to go and buy that whole barrel. And the group that picked the barrel end up not getting the, the, the their own barrel. But that's because of the rule of the state. He used it to his advantage to sell those to buy all these bottles. Right under his group. Was it a, a dick move? Absolutely. But was he legal? Yes, he was. But, so, he, but he also was operating like exactly in what he was allowed to do. So correct. So that's that's why I, I wanted to make sure we cleared this thing up so no one sitting there and use this thing against you or against your business in the future. Because if somebody come on and start saying, Oh my god, you know, Nick this or, or, or Jimmy this, I'll be like, refer to podcast, YouTube. On this day, there you, you go. Hear the rest of the story. I'm not going. Now you to got a baseline again. So ask me I, any questions. I'll tell you no lies, man. You know <laughs> uh, how many expressions of good times are out there right now? You guys have been around about about two years, a year and a half, or a year. 
Uh, so we sold our first barrel pick a little over a year ago, right, Nick? Last August. Yep. August. Yeah. yeah. So I'm we uh, here's what, what we do say? is we got this MGP. You'll come. You pick a straight rye or bourbon, and you tell you tell us how you want it finished. You know, we finish to order. So the groups come in. To be honest with you, we started with all bourbons, and then your boy Will Bill uh, come in. He was like, "I want to do a uh, I want to do a honey rye," and I was like, "I'm not a big rye fan." Uh, so I was like, we'll buy a couple rye barrels and we'll let you pick one and we'll honey finish it. I'm sure it'll be good. So we got a couple ryes in and they were phenomenal, phenomenal. Like MGP ryes are the best on the market, I would have to say. I mean, yeah, there's some good ones out I'll there. To, but... I'll have to give them that too. MGP rye are good. Oh my if, goodness. We, if we go by anything that barrel is putting out, anything that stellium obviously is putting out, or, you know, all these uh, 95 five ryes that they put out are just amazing. So, yeah, so so we so we started getting some uh, some of these ryes in, and we started finishing them. And now I like ryes as much, if not more, than bourbon. I'll be honest with you, and they finish great. I mean, you still get that rye spice, and the finish just cuts that a little bit. And I mean, it's just phenomenal. Like if you all aren't rye play. fans, try some finished good times rye, and you'll become a rye fan. I guarantee it. So, you guys, so we started a year. Go ahead. go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Nick. You asked how many expressions we started a year ago with the four barrels, you know, and and we all everything we do is single barrel. So we like to say that everything we put out is a unique barrel. I mean, it's all single barrel products that we finish in different ways. We've done two honey ryes or whatever, right? But it's a different barrel of rye. And so so far we've we've put out 133 barrels. 133 barrels? Holy crap! That's a lot. So uh, well, I'll say put out. We we've sold 133. Some of those are still in the work. Some of those are still finishing today. Okay. 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 All right. So you guys brought us now that we actually talked about the hard stuff. Let's get to the good time. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> this peach uh, rye's got me, or this peach uh, bourbon's got me loosening it up. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, what bro. You so you guys send us two of your pick. One was by the 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 fucking good club book club, which is Will's uh, group. They had a peach. Uh, finish bourbon, mm. and you send us the toasted honey uh, bourbon as well. So these are the two. Uh, somebody said the group actually chose to uh, uh, chose banana. Who has yeah, a we banana got, barrel? We got what's that? Banana barrel. Uh, we've got some br banana yeah. brandy barrels, yeah, and some banana rum barrels, finishing barrels. Really good. So, I think I gave the, Tim a sample of the banana or bourbon, right? Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm pouring the peach right now. So tell I, us a little bit how you how you did the peach. The peach is one of my favorites. It's phenomenal. And what it happened there like, was it tastes like peach tea. I'll be honest. Oh my god, it tastes goodness. like peach tea. It's so, fifty-five, so one hundred and ten proof. So, so what happened here was Will built uh, the fucking book club. They came down. Uh, they brought like what a dozen people, right, Nick? I mean, we that had like a, big, a party. A we had a party at the farm, man. Like they were chasing cows after the barrel pick. It was crazy, dude. <laughs> I swear. So we came in, we picked All this. Right. Uh, this is about a, a, a seven year, eight month old, um, twenty one percent rye MGP. So it was almost eight years old. Um, we got some really good batch of uh, peach brandy barrels in. Um, some really good peach brandy barrels. You you pop the bung and it almost smells and smells uh, like uh, like um, peach Jolly Ranchers. Like just blow your mind. Uh, so we just uh, so we got it in. We transferred it in there, let it chill for a couple months, and this is what you get. And I've been sipping on it since the show started, and it's phenomenal. This is good. This is real good. It's one of my favorite things we've done. That's a really so how good how. How new how new are these barrels when you guys are toasting them? Or not toasting them, I'm sorry. When you guys are finishing them, how new are these barrels? Because I mean this is this is peachy. Like it is just like I almost don't like it because on the nose it's just it's just peaches. It's peaches and alcohol and maybe some oak if you really dig in there and then there's, but there is a little bit of baking spice. So no, sure, no, no, well. there is, but I mean, like, it's very on the nose. It feels very one-dimensional uh, to me. But then you drink it, and you're like, 
fuck, this is actually kind of good. So, <laughs> it's dangerous. So, so, so how how fresh are these barrels? Like, what's what's going on there? This batch of peach brandy was really fresh. I mean, so uh, I'll I'll go back a little bit. We start with the is this four a, barrels. Is this a local? <laughs> is this is this a local peach brandy like an Indiana peach brandy? No, it's not. No. We 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 get our barrels from all over the country. Well, all over the world, really. We've got some in Europe and whatever. We've got Armagnac can you, going up. Over. Can you say where the barrels from or no? Uh, all over the place. So I I don't uh, yeah I don't I don't get into the specifics of every single barrel because we've done a hundred. Three different ones, you know. Um, but we, we so when I uh, we did our first apple brandy barrel, and when I called to get a second one, that that apple brandy manufacturer was out and said we we don't have another apple brandy barrel for you for six months. And so I just started mission calling everybody. That could think, you know, I just I just googled for days and weeks. I mean, probably probably two weeks. I mean, we started with four barrels. In the beginning, we had all kinds of free time, you know. Sure. And uh, my mission was to find another apple brandy barrel. So I, I spent calling everybody I could think of. And, I got a list of all these different places that I can get barrels from, and they know I want them. And so the majority of the barrels we get are pretty freshly dumped. That's that's the name of the game. The fresher, the better for me. And I call all these contacts. I get all these barrels coming. Yeah, I mean, I'm so not. I, I don't, don't want to get. Into, like, I'm not yeah, I don't. I don't get into it. It it tastes. Uh, it tastes like peaches. You know, like you like, said, like a peach tea, you know, like a peach like sweet peach, tea, you know. It's like mm -hmm. peach sweet tea. I'll be real; it's exactly what it fucking tastes like. For a hundred ten proof, that's a that's a panty uh, drop. Hundred and ten proof sweet peach tea. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but it, every sip, I'm just like, I want more. I want more. I want more. Like, I can crush a bottle of this real quick. No, absolutely. Uh, I'm gonna pour the toasted. So you guys did a toasted honey. What does that mean, toasted honey? I want to. Let's talk about that. Toasted honey. What What does that mean? Is it a toasted barrel that was a that aged honey? What What is it? And it is thick too. It's yeah, a little on the cloudy yeah. side. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Nothing wrong with that. Well, cloudy is good. So this, uh, we toasted it. This is another. Uh, seven year eight month old i think around the time we started toasting it we are so we toasted it um and then we put it in a honey finishing barrel and this is what you come up with so you put it in a toasted barrel yeah put it then in a honey barrel yes sir oh, so it's a dual finish it's a double finish yes sir aha uh -huh. okay mm -hmm. and now we've been doing double and even triple finishes here lately so stop yeah so so you guys kind of create right. yourself as uh, as a, a single barrel, almost a, a single barrel concierge. Somebody walk to you guys and go, hey, I want a single barrel, but I want uh, 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 a little unicorn barrel here. Give me a little bit of toast in here. Add a little bit of honey on the end, and I'm going to take that. And that's what everybody's loving. Yeah. They're loving the toasted honeys. And we got, we got do, all kinds of Do you guys offer your client a specific profile that you can do, or do you leave them the choice to do We so? leave them the choice. So they pick a straight, <laughs> so a straight we're doing barrel, barrel, and they can finish we any way they want. We, when we started Good Times, we had the bourbon barrel pick group. We were doing barrel picks, and, and, and when we set out to do, to do Good Times with our four barrels, we wanted to create the ultimate barrel picking Experience. That was our goal. We, we, we did barrel picks where you walk in, you see three <laughs> barrels, and you see one barrel and go. And if you were doing it through a store, you were lucky if you got your one barrel because if it was the best barrel to pick, the store wanted it, you know, and they didn't want to give you the whole thing. So so with Jimmy and I, we were doing barrel picks. When we had a chance to do our own brand and start good times, we, we wanted to make it where the customer comes in and gets to do what they want, how they want to do it. That was our goal. Somebody want to know how, how where is it, where is it finished aging and how long, for how long? So it's out of our, we're working out of Three Boys Farm Distiller in Frankfort, Kentucky, and everything's uh, chilling there. Uh, and different, we, um, I like to drink bourbon, man. So I've gone from drinking bottles at my house to drinking out of the barrels at the farm. So it's just an upgrade, man. Now I go drink barrels on the daily. So we uh, we really finished to our taste. Uh, we've so developed that, a quite the palate. The question I was asking is, yeah. I know you guys, I mean, I can tell from your experience that you've done a few barrel pick and you're like, fuck it. We want to do it the way people want, you know, the people want. We just don't want any one mainstream way of barrel picking. But 
if I walk to you, let's say we say we're going to do a Monday sucks good time, right? Yeah. Pick right now. Yeah. When we come to you, if uh, Tim say, you know what? I'm craving like an Armagnac barrel. But I say, you know what? With Armagnac, I still want you all to choose me to get me a P a PD Scotch barrel that we can finish that in. Would you guys go find that type of barrel for someone like me? Or would you just say, you know what? You only got option A, B, and C, D. That's what we have right now, and that's all you can do. How is it that you guys are looking for those barrels out, you know, out of the ordinary that most distillery would not offer? Nick's been like, uh, like he said, he's contacted a uh, hundred cooperages across the world. Like, uh, we've got some Armagnac barrels coming right now. You tell us what kind of barrel you want, and we'll put Nick on the hunt for it. We'll do our best to try to get it. if we can get that finishing barrel. Then uh, we'll finish your bourbon that way. It's as simple as that. You know, we had people come at us asking all kinds of crazy different finishes, and if we can locate that finishing barrel, it's available. Then we can finish bourbon that way. Yeah. So. Whatever you want, man. Not gonna lie, I've been working on these Armagnac barrels since April. You know, uh, you know. Maybe, well, obviously, I've been trying to find Armagnac since late last year, right? And I finally secured some in April, and they're just now getting here, kind of thing, right? So it's, it's a challenge, but I will definitely try and hunt barrels and get whatever you want because that's that's my goal. I want to make a unique product just like you. I will. I, I will have to. The marketer in me is thinking of you guys. Are the, you guys just need to st start advertising yourself that way? Say so good times. Here you make your own single barrel, right? I like it. Build a barrel. Like because you know, knowing obviously I know Will and Will, I know how his palate think. He's like, I want something so different, so weird, uh, that no one actually can find it anywhere. Um, but obviously, it's interesting that two bourbon flippers decide you know what fuck it we are going to sell uh we are going to start selling bourbon hey, I, I was i had a master's degree in engineering before i was a bourbon flipper you know <laughs> okay. okay bourbon flippers but uh, you're not you but if you're not using it now you're still just a bourbon flipper you're just a really yeah, fucking I still smart paid for it either you're, you're still just a really fucking smart bourbon flipper that's all that means uh, there's nothing, okay, wrong, I'll with take that. That. There's the, nothing wrong with that the 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 thing will be um the ability to pick a barrel obviously right age it the way you want to uh, finish it the way you want to which a lot of people are looking for so you guys found a problem in the industry and you're solving it because yeah like I we said we you. had a we had a bourbon group and we love to do barrel picks and you can't get a barrel pick at any distillery you want so yeah. we like to to cater to like the uh the bourbon clubs and we give them the option and the freedom to do whatever they want I mean, people love it. Don't you love that idea? I mean, how no, 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 no. That's what I'm saying. Man. You guys yeah. found a problem in the matrix, and yep. you're solving it. Yeah. Because a lot of people, like sometimes me myself, I get called to actually consult on barrel picks, and I would taste it. I'm like, oh, is that all you guys have? Because I <laughs> wish, I wish this was finished, or this was more aged, or this was this, this, and that. And you, you, you're like, oh no, fuck you. That's all we got. You know that this is all we have. So yeah. obviously. Not everybody get this opportunity to actually handpick the way the bourbon is going to be. Yeah. So that that makes you guys special in more ways than one. Um, absolutely, I, I will absolutely say, how does one right? Because here you guys running a business. I will. I, we would love to support your business. So how does how does people or how can people contact you if they want to do a barrel pick with y'all? Uh, so we're on Facebook and Instagram, Facebook, good times bourbon and okay. uh, Instagram, good underscore times underscore bourbon, uh, hit us up. I run our social media, so I will be answering your Facebook be your to Jim questions. Jim. Yeah, he crazy. Don't me. worry about it. He crazy. Hey, whatever. He, he love, he, he love a good time. So That's right. Crazy. Mr. Good times. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, what do y'all think so, of this toasted honey? That's pretty fucking no, good. No, no, no. I will tell you right now, I'm stuck on that toasted honey. I really like the toasted honey. It's very I mean, sweet. It's very, very sweet. I want to, I want to make myself a smoke old fashioned with this. That's yeah. that's what I'm thinking about. Is if I can make me a smoke old fashioned with this. This all you need to do is just throw some bitters in this glass, and I yes. think it's set. I'm telling you, you all you need is just some bitter. But I want to smoke it because that honey. Because remember, when you have like a charcuterie board. When you get that honey, that honeycomb, and you get it with some brie, 
and just that toasted, uh, 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 uh that toasted uh, baguette. Uh, my that, God. So if you put some bitter <laughs> in this and just toast it with them, some apple wood or some cherry wood, boom, that will get you elevated there. Uh, you guys are also, uh, you guys are also tater, tater kins. Or do you just let the group go all crazy tater on your bottle? Because I've seen some crazy good time bottles. Yo, yeah. waxing the bottoms of the bottles now. You guys are like starting this. So you are you guys doing it, it or are you go are you just letting people grand vamp it with, with whatever they want to do? Uh so um either way, I mean if you bring give us our stickers uh before we bottle it, we can put your tater stickers on. Uh we can wax or, I mean, mo for the most part, the groups are doing most of the tatering themselves. So I'm not going to lie to you. We're busy um, transferring barrels, modeling. Like, it's just me and Nick. Good times is me and Nick's only two employees. Good times has got right now. And today I work from sun up to sundown almost, you know. So, so really you, the groups. You think yeah. I'm already follow them. It's good underscore time underscore bourbon. On Make sure y'all follow them on Instagram and on Facebook. I will tell you if you belong to most, you know, the fucking boot club, which is literally the initial the fucking good clubs. I'm sure they have plenty of good time barrels coming up that you can actually get your hands on. But if you're a group and you would like to do something different, that is not Nulu. Oh, shot fired! Uh, you can actually you can actually get uh, yourself uh, some good time bourbon. And uh, and uh, you know, drop oh, my <laughs> hey, this, this is not on Instagram, so I'm good. <laughs> so, uh, uh, make sure make sure you drop our name. Say, hey, I saw you on Jack's show. Can I get a? Uh, I saw you on the show discount. So, um, but let's support this business. Uh, let's support the curator of the single barrel that want to make things different. They found a problem in the industry and they told themselves, you know what, fuck it. We are going to solve it. We, we, you come to us, we'll finish your barrel, we'll do whatever you need to do so you can have it the way, your bourbon the way you like it. Because the hardest thing in this life is to having your bourbon the way you like it. That's and, right. Uh, th this is more than just finding a solution. It's really giving an opportunity to people to really do what they want. Any last word from you, Jimmy and, and Nick? Because today is my man's birthday. We're going to be going on Instagram to have a party there. So we want to make sure that we give you your time, we give you your good time, no pun intended, so you can actually shine. So, <laughs> so any last word from y'all? What do you want people need people to know? Anything you want me to post on the screen? And then I will have the last question of the show for y'all uh, that any guests get before the end of the show. Any last word from y'all? Yeah, I mean, we're just out here living our dream. Uh, we appreciate you having us on the show. Um, I mean, our end goal is we'd love to have our own uh, distillery one day. You know, I mean, isn't I mean, we we started with fifty grand. I'm not even gonna lie to you, man. We're two poor broke boys from Kentucky just trying to make it. We appreciate everybody's support. We're just trying to sell barrels and raise money, buy more barrels, and get a distillery going one day. You know, so y'all can come to our gift shop and do things at our spot you know we love three Good boys and, times. yeah we love three boys and robert with down home thank you for getting our foot in the door i mean we're just we're just grateful for everything man we just love you all we just love everybody man just peace love and happiness and good times right absolutely nick you got nick, anything to say brother nick, nick is nick is always the quiet uh, thanks, thanks for having us. Uh, yeah, thanks for having us on the show this has been awesome you know uh it's always good to share good times that's still uh Definitely want to say happy birthday to Tim. Yeah, uh, you've motivated me. I, I I get 84 bottles for my birthday too. I've got an Ezra Brooks from 84 down there. I'll drink it in there you go. your name tonight. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. You can't come on and, uh, thanks, without having advice that does not suck. This is the late man test right here. If if you don't give us good advice, your ass is never coming back, coming back on the show. This. Is it that we oh, yeah. know all about the bourbon? We know all about the people now. Good job. My like, my advice here. is live your dream. Wake up tomorrow and do what you love to do and live your dream and live life to the fullest. You know, oh, cheers. To you can manifest your birthday to your future, and you can only do that by living your, happy happy your dream. Now. Happy birthday, Tim. Let's go. <laughs> Woo! Nick, Nick, what's what's your advice? Sorry, I if so, uh, yeah, you, you can uh, manifest anything you want into your future, and you can only do that by living your dream every day. Like Jimmy said, wake up, live your dream. You know? 
wake up and That's live it. your dream. This is an advice. Help other people bad value in this world. Wake up and live your dream. Tim, you heard the man. Oh, wake I'm up. living it, baby. Oh, I'm fucking up. living it. Wake up and live your dream. This is this is something I didn't think I will actually hear. But yes, wake up and live your dream. This is what we got from the good time folks. Folks, this is our time today. If you're here following us and you want to actually join us, we are moving to Instagram because today we will be celebrating. It's not going to be, it's going to be a Monday suck special. It, it's gonna, actually not even going to be on my channel. We are going on Tim's channel. He gets to celebrate his birthday. I'm just here to be the hype man. We're gonna, I'm going to be his hype man today so we can have a good time, no pun intended, on his birthday <laughs> today. So it was the best bourbon to – you guys are the best guests to have today because Tim is truly about a good time. So I'm glad you guys were up front. I'm glad you guys were here with us and you guys were just honest and straight to the point. Uh, if any group is out there, make sure you follow them. If you guys want to do a barrel pick in your group and you need someone who actually can understand what it feels like to actually do your own barrel pick the way you want to, these are the guys you want to talk to. They will let you actually almost do anything you want. So who, who wouldn't want that? So thank you all so much for coming. We appreciate you all being here. We, we, you are guys are welcome to Monday Socks anytime. So if there, you have guys, you guys have anything that you want to bring to the group you want us to talk about, you guys are welcome to actually come here and talk about it. We love that you've been here. We appreciate every single one of y'all. For all of you guys at home, remember, you can follow Good Time on Facebook, Good Time Bourbon, or on Instagram, which is good underscore time Times. underscore bourbon. When you, if you're here and you don't know who we are, I'm sorry for you. I am Jack, <laughs> and he is TVR. I'm TVR. Okay, you hey, know it. Not. You know it. He's out here on these streets. He's out here talking about whiskey, bourbon, everything that you need to know. But remember, join us on Instagram where the real party is gonna happen. Tim today is getting old as fuck, and we're here to celebrate. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for joining. We appreciate and love y'all. And we will see you guys next Monday. We 